So I'm going to show the uh, new improved layer names add-on, which was uh, uh, recently changed thanks to some input from CodemanX on uh, the uh, the uh, Blender uh, Python channel on IRC. Thanks, and also thanks to the new work on the UI layer lists uh, that were done. Uh, very recently um, by I think the user's name is Mont29 um, Bastian maybe is his name I'm not sure but um, yeah very nice and uh, uh, nice opportunity to improve the UI for our old layer manager uh, so very briefly the um, the layer manager uh, named layer names um, is an add-on that we use in Tube. Um, there are similar add-ons out there uh, that do similar things. This is more customized for production. Um, and um, I'll enable it here in the add-ons. And what it does is it allows you, among other things, to have nice uh, named layers associated with the uh, sort of the these uh, little dots that are the numbered layers that are typically there in the viewport. And the new location for this is in the new uh, layers um, panel uh, in the properties, uh, the layers tab in the properties editor. And um, uh, here it's with its uh, currently temp name Amaranth Layers. Um, I'm going to move it down um, so it's at the bottom because I prefer this like that. And I'll expand it. And you can see there's a couple of default layers atta attached to. Um, this file already and um, what's nice about it is that it's fairly compact um, because you can resize the new uh, list item um, it can take as much or as little size as you want we can see later on we can actually end up hiding this layer uh, tab altogether and just working like this so simple things first um, adding layers can be done here or here in the 3d header we have a little menu for the layers if you click on the plus you get a pop-up and one of the new things is that um, we have a little uh, button row box for selecting which layer um, we're going to name um, and that's um, the exclusivity of that is a little hack um, and um, that what my next taught me to do and um, it's uh, not terrible the only um, uh, let's call this test layer and the only kind of uh, little gotcha is that in the uh, operator pop-up it doesn't have to update to well. so you can assign a type to your layer and notice if I click on this they look like they're both on but the moment I move my mouse uh, this one goes off so let's click OK and we've just added another layer and that shows up here as well. Um, now, uh, if we wanted to edit our existing layers, we simply click on the lock in the panel header and we get the slightly more uh, uh, involved interface here, uh, right in the same list item. Um, and here we can start changing things. So we might change the type. Uh, so we could call this rigs and you know, give it a name. Um, maybe call this a character and we can change which layer they refer to and notice the visibility goes off if you click on different ones and uh, one of the nice things is um, let's say we move our camera to the second layer call that camera notice the active object is in that layer and let's call this cube and this one whoops this one has a gray dot and let's call this one empty and it has nothing in it. So it has the same kind of dots that you see in the uh, old layer style. Um, and that's also the case if you lock it so that you have these nice things. Now you can also add and remove layers right from this panel here. If you click on this little plus, plus sorry, um, we, get, um, we get kind of a, a slightly abused um, uh, area which is normally intended for searching and filtering and I've abused this in many ways. First of all, uh, we have our uh, reordering buttons. So we have these two arrows that let you uh, nicely reorder a layer. Um, you can also use different sort orders. So if I sort by name, notice the buttons disappear because they wouldn't do anything. You can sort by type or by layer order. Um, 
so you can see these are in order right now. I didn't implement reverse ordering, but that's something that we could do. Um, and I'll explain the filtering in a moment. It's a little bit uh, different from what you'd expect. Uh, you can create a new layer by clicking on this button. You get the same pop-up, and you get a new layer. And of course, if you want, uh, you don't even have to do anything in the pop-up. You just accept it and then edit it right here. So, you know, here we go. And so we have a new layer there. Um, so that's pretty nifty. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool is that these integrate very well with the render layers. Um, so um, I'll expand this for a moment just so we can talk about that. Um, you notice this, this render layer contains all the scene layers. So what if it only contained the first one, just as a test? Um, and so now we have this render layer active. Um, I can go here and click on layer. And this will show me only the layer that is in the current render layer. Um, and um, Similarly, I can see only the layers that are in the exclude layers for the current render layer or only the layer that's in the mask layer for the current render layer. And that's going to become easier to understand if we look at an actual file. So I'm going to open um, a light file. And uh, there we go. So this has a few more named layers. Um, and um, so if I go to the uh, layer um, interface here, you can see that the main has lights interior, lights outside, these people in the background, um, and uh, the station and the background light. If I click on character, I get also the lights, but I have Gilgamesh, the paper, and a drop of blood that um, if I zoom in, you can see it right there. Um, now, um, this particular scene doesn't have too much in the way of masks or excludes, but it does have a little bit. So if I go to mask, you can see that the station background is used to mask this layer. So anything that's sort of going below the ground um, or that's behind something won't actually get rendered. Um, similarly, if I go to excludes, you can see that these three um, layers are excluded from everything. That, so in case one of them got turned on, uh, it won't affect the render. Um, and if you go to main, you'll see that it has the same excludes. Um, and so that's basically that kind of functionality. Um, so let's say that I was in uh, main and I decided for some reason that I didn't want Gilgamesh to cast a shadow uh, into my layer and I wanted to exclude her from it. Well, what I could do is go back to none and make Gilgamesh the active layer and then click on add exclude. Notice it changes to del exclude the moment I do that. Now if I sort on exclude, you'll see that Gilga is excluded here. And uh, if I change my mind, I can just click on it again and I've removed it. Similarly, I can add a mask or I can add a new layer to my render layer uh, pretty easily, um, no matter what it is. Um, so that is uh, basically it. Uh, there's only one other thing to look at right now is that um, of course if you click on an object want to move it to a layer you can hit M and you can see these um, cryptic buttons once again um, and right now if I do control shift A I will get a uh, similar interface but with the um, named layers and so I can add my uh, my light for instance to these layers and click OK and I've just done that. Um, so uh, while that's not terribly useful, it's uh, in this case it's just an example of, of moving layer to name the layers. And so uh, having done that, you can pretty much you know hide this most of the time. And um, once you've created all your named layers, not really care to look at the actual numbered buttons anymore if you don't want to. And if you do want to look at the buttons and make correl correlations, um, it's handy to have the kind of visual um, relationship here instead of having to count numbers, and uh, which is how the old version of this worked. Um, so 
that's about it for like named layers and functionality with render layers. It's pretty simple. Um, but there is one nice thing that I'd like to show, um, and that is um, this here two buttons down here, and that's the uh, render state buttons. And so currently, in fact, let me backtrack a bit and say the, the reasoning for this is that um, we are rendering shots on the farm all the time, and uh, quite often what happens is that uh, somebody would um, uh, be doing some lighting tests on their computer, maybe just looking at the main character and have all the other layers turned off and throw the shot on the farm and have it come back without a background render. Or they might do some different test and throw it on the farm and it will come back black or so and so forth. And um, so for some things we um, basically just have a script on the farm that like sets our scene settings to default good settings uh, but of course some of those settings are specific to your file and that's where the save render state button comes in right now it includes uh, which scene layers are visible uh, which render layers are visible in all the scenes in the file this file actually has three scenes that get composited together um, and so it also tells you which scene is active so for instance, if I go to the volume uh, scene here, and this, this is a, a Blender internal rendering scene with a little volume to get some, some uh, kind of a, a dust um, in the atmosphere. And if I click on Restore Render State, it's going to bring me back to my main scene. Um, and it's going to bring me back to my main scene with the correct layers turned on and the correct render layers turned on. For instance, if I turn these off, and do restore render state, I get these checkboxes back on. And uh, now it's both grayed, which means that the current state and the saved state are the same. So there's no point in either saving or restoring. If I change it, I can either save my change or I can restore the old version. And if the file were to be fresh, uh, where no state has been saved, the restore button would be great, but the save button would be uh, not great. And uh, if I add a new scene or a new render layer, um, I'm going to, you know, for instance, I can add this, and I instantly have the option to save this uh, render state. Um, so I'm going to just delete this render layer because I don't want it. Um, and so you can see that it kind of is smart and knows what you have. Um, and the other side of this is um, not applicable to users that add an at large unless you're using Helga. Uh, but um, I made a change in Helga here. And so this is the um, tickle script that um, um, launches a render. It's Helga render tickle. And one of the things it does it is it builds a Python script in tickle. Um, and then it runs that on the current file and it saves it to change the settings. And so I added some code to the beginning of this, um, which um, it took me a long time to figure out that you need to escape these square brackets. Um, and basically what it does is it checks for these um, properties that the um, layer names uh, script creates. Um, and if they exist, um, then it knows that it can uh, set up the types and then go through the scenes and restore them to their saved state. Uh, so even if you forget to click on the, the restore state button in uh, Blender and you save this to the farm and you go to render it, uh, you're automatically going to get um, a, a, a correct render um, even if you had saved the file um, incorrectly. Uh, so it'll save us from some uh, annoyances and from like waiting a, you know a few hours to get like a uh, hundred black frames back from the farm and you know save us those kind of uh, little incidences um, it's also very nice if you're uh, taking a file over from somebody else and you um, <coughs> don't know exactly what's going on but you have um, you have some feedback um, uh, the layers are named um, the correct state is saved so if you like uncheck a layer you don't have to wonder if that's supposed to be there or not supposed to be there and so forth um, yeah so uh, that's uh, basically it um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, this uh, little uh, demonstration of, of our um, our layer manager script